guys, you couldn't resist it, could you? Yet another video. Well, this one's quite straightforward. The other day, as per usual, I'm on eBay and I'm thinking, what can I have? Well, I saw this interesting box which I thought had potential. So, I need to give a big shout to Alex G and a bunch of filters. That's his request. So, I purchased this box. It arrived the next day, before 10 o'clock, most impressive. Let's see what I did with it. Here's our box. Let's see what it is. Ah. Well, we've got four sockets on the front. Nice little control. Voltmeter and emitter. Hmm. Ah, oh, and a trip on the output. Most important. Blimey boys, that wiring's a bit messy, isn't it? I think we need to tidy it up a bit. Right, when this unit come in, we just had four standard outlets, 16 amp outlets, AC. Now, as you can see, I've got two AC ones. Now I've got a variable DC and a reversible and variable DC output. It's been tidied up a little bit. Oh, it's got a stop button on it, of course. Let's have a look inside it, shall we? There's our mains input, and this time we've got a small 1 amp control fuse, and you'll see why. This one's actually wired up now correctly, as when I first got this, it was actually wired up reverse polarity on the mains, which is potentially dangerous on a variac. Zero volts, you don't want that, there's 240. So there's our input, and it goes up to the control fuse, which now controls that contactor via stop button and that key switch. So that's the mains control side of it. The other side, there's a small relay there, which controls the DC. It reverses polarity because it's a triple pole changeover, so I just use double pole changeover. It probably won't take 30 amps DC at uh, significantly high voltage because there's going to be an arcing problem. It's very hard to quench a DC arc. So those relays really aren't meant for high voltage DC. Got a 90 amp rectifier in there just for good measure. And at the top there, let me get you a shot on the top because it's all been rewired and bear with us. Nice wiring in there, all nice and new, which is much better. It's quite an interesting variant, that one. It's only a baby one, but did I pack out a punch? Right, let's turn it on then, shall we? Stop button, on. Ah, oh, good. As you can see, it's a standard uh, voltage output. 270, 275. Put this bloody meter. Got some serious calibrating, I think. Right. Yep, yeah, you can see the uh, switch there for reversing the DC polarity. Then we'll give that a quick test, make sure that works. This electric motor is a very tiny 240 volt DC permanent magnet motor off uh, a Dyson vacuum cleaner. This drove the roller brushes. So let's put this on a bit of DC. See what it does in reverse. There's our little DC motor connected. I need to test this relay now. So 26 volts. Reverse. That's useful. What I'm going to do, I'm going to run this for a few minutes at 20 amps 
just to see uh, how we get on with that. Roughly. That's dropping slightly naturally because that load bank, obviously it's resistive load, as that gets hot, resistance increases, which causes a decrease in current. Um, 19 amps, we'll run that for a bit, that's cooking up nicely. So the question is, what can that Variac take, which is in there? Interesting to find out. I think it's good for about 20 amps. Well, we don't want 20 amps, do we? Mm, I think that might pop. 30 amps. Better reduce it a bit, but my heater's overheating. <laughs> Should we pop it? Oh. Not too, wouldn't it? Ah. Well, at least it tripped. Got a bit of a saggy element. Oh, boys, I forgot one crucial thing. The fuse in the plug had not been photonic induction. It will be now. Well it's definitely confirmed. It looks like this little box will run 20 amps all day long. And it will probably take a little bit more for short periods of time. 40 amps but the heater's not happy. Well the good news is nothing in here is getting warm. Apart from that 90 amp diode when I load it up. Variac, amazingly, I thought it looked a bit cheap, but it can take it. And I should say, never ever be tempted to stick your hand in there and feel how warm something is, because you might get a nasty surprise. Um, no, the current transformer there for the air meter, but it's a lot neater in there than what it was. But I assume this was a 20 amp Variac, or thereabouts. And I've only wired it up using 2.5, but it's a high rated cable. Um, so I need to test a bit of that 2.5 until there's flames to see how much it can take. And then I'll be happy. Because um, I wouldn't want to run this thing at 40 amps if that wiring can't take it. But I know it's good for. 20 amps, which is good. It's portable, we'll have to call it something. The Porter Pop. <laughs> I don't know, guys. I just like little things like that. It's a bit better than uh, this one, because this was uh, a bit clumbersome, wasn't it, using it on DC? Uh, I'm going to do a bit more with that after this video, and we're going to repair that. I'm going to put new bushings on it. Easy job. So you can see what's inside that when I finally get on with it. Okay, let's test this bit of wire then, shall we? Let's uh, see how much uh, current a bit of 2.5 can take. Then at the moment, I'm just using this uh, auto transformer just to stick uh, higher current through this. Um, what have we got now? Twenty-seven amps. No big uh, burnouts, and it's barely warm, to be honest. Should put a bit more through it. What about I turn this up some more? See it twitch there, can't you? That was a fair old bit of current, actually. Hundred and fifty amps. No big burnouts. And we're getting warm, but it's still not melted. That's amazing. 
what I think I need to do is run that at 40 amps for five minutes and see what happens. Forty amps. No, that run at forty amps like that all day. Might be a bit of losses because of the resistance increase and the heat, but forty amps on a bit of two point five. Wouldn't recommend it. I mean, I think twenty amps is the maximum rating, but this is like hundred and five degree decent cable. Oh, that's no less. So yeah, I'm happy with forty amps. Well, that's not a disaster then. But, out of interest, let's see how many amps this cable can take before it goes up in flames. 100 amps. 150. 200 amps, more or less. There's 200 amps going through that. Oh, here it goes. Oh. It's getting excited. Mmm. I think I need to vacate the room. Well, I think I'll, uh, <laughs> I think I'll get out of here. So I'm below the smoke, I'm down here. But I think I'll uh, ventilate the room. So, 150 amps and it's all over. If I did get flames, I'm disappointed. Where's my hammer? It was in the name of science and it did have to be done. Come on, you've got to admit that. You know I enjoyed it. Everything in there seems to work fine. So I think we can pop this cover back on and forget about it. So that was a nice little project, kept me busy for a couple of hours while the missus was busy. Now we've got a nice little portable power unit, it can provide 20 amps AC or DC. We can even reverse the polarity on the DC and can take 40 amps short circuit or overload for a short period of time. But of course what I would say is if you're playing with Variax, which I know a lot of you are, if you're down the lower end Right, on the low voltage and you get overload or short circuit you will pull enormous amounts of amps and a variac is only rated in its maximum current output even if you're on 20 volts you don't want to go over the maximum rating of that variac because on my 28 amp one you know it'll run 70 80 amps and that's not good for it so get yourself some sort of breaker or cut out on the output side because you might be pulling 40, 50, even 60 amps on the output, but the main side will only be pulling like 10 amps. So don't rely on that mains fuse to protect your variac. Have something on the output. Guys, I think that's that little project done. I'm going to uh, crank the big boy supply up on the next vid in a way that you've not seen before. Um, cat saying that like, look, bloody nosy thing, isn't it, eh? Guys, See you in the next vid. Thanks for watching. Play safe.